always like to start every day in every presentation by clearing the area. And sometimes I use sound. I'm known to carry bubbles with me because it relaxes me. It draws, draws me back to my childhood. So my name is Tina K. Valant. You can find me here in South Florida and online in many places I'll share with you after. So I have an interesting hobby. I've raised and released native butterflies for over 20 years. Now the monarchs behind me are the world's most loved butterfly found on every continent except Antarctica. So butterflies signify so much in our lives. They're the sentinels of beauty. They're amazing pollinators resulting in more flowers, more fruits, fruits more vegetables, and more yield for all of us. Native Americans believe that butterflies are the sentinels of loved ones from our past coming with messages that they're all right and they're doing fine. So look for a butterfly every day around you and think about who that could be coming to bring you blessings. Also, a lot of people believe that when you whisper your wishes on a butterfly's wings, they will be granted. So they're so amazing and beautiful and they bring such joy to our lives. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about the butterfly effect and what where that phrase came from, what it means and how you can by making small changes in your life result in very large beneficial results. So I have a beautiful PowerPoint I'd like to bring up and show you. Okay. Thank you. Here we go. So enough about me. <laughs> so the butterfly effect is, what is it? Again, we talked about how making small, seemingly insignificant changes can bring you huge results. And I'm gonna share some ideas with you later on how to bring in some changes. So the butterfly you saw before, it was the Eastern Black Swallowtail. If you'd like to attract them to your yard, plant parsley, dill, and fennel. Here are the two beautiful monarchs behind me. These are uh, both female monarchs, and I can show you later how to tell whether they're male or female. So. Where did the butterfly effect come from? Edward Norton Lorenz was an MIT professor. I'm not gonna read you the whole slide. He came up with his doctoral thesis on predictability. How does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? He began a revolution known as the chaos theory. And oddly enough, this very graph is the result of that theory. And what does it look like? The butterfly's wings. So here today, and by you listening, I'm initiating my own butterfly effect by serving this information, sharing ideas, which will enable you to shine. That's my favorite hashtag, serve, share, and shine. Feel free to use it. And the butterfly you're seeing here is the uh, zebra longwing. That is the Florida state butterfly. And if you'd like to attract them to your yard, you want to plant passion vine. And you can see when you see them flying around, you think, oh, they're just black with yellow stripes, but you can see in this close-up picture that they have a beautiful iridescence to their wings and also those magnificent red dots on the underwings. So things are always more than they appear to be. They're much more beautiful than you can imagine. So the first thing is everything starts with an egg and we can think about that as we have ideas. Everything starts with an idea. So the butterflies start with eggs. In the top slide, you're seeing that look like tiny corn on the cob are the zebra longwing eggs, and that's on passion line. The little tiny yellow pearl at the bottom is the monarch egg, and that's on milkweed. So if you want to attract monarchs, you need to plant milkweed. That's their exclusive plant. Monarchs, these have just shed their skin, are in training. They will party, which means eat, poop and sleep, and they are very good at it. I have to set my alarm to get up sometimes in the middle of the night when I have hundreds of caterpillars to replenish their milkweed supply in their tiny enclosures that I keep them in that shields them from predators, parasites, and stormy weather that we occasionally get down here in South Florida. And they excel at their jobs. Monarchs will go through four instars, and that's changing of the skin, and they're growing and bursting. So a great way to think about this and applying it to our, our lives is you can see these two caterpillars have shed their old skin. They've outgrown it. They have no longer use for it. What are you holding on to that is no longer serving you? And especially in this very interesting time we're living in, a lot of people have taken 
the opportunity to clear out clutter, to reassess their plan, where they're going, where they've been, and making better choices, whether it's getting out in the fresh air and sunshine, which I'm so blessed to do because I would go crazy if we weren't allowed to get, at least go walking. What are you holding on to, whether it's a story, whether it's something in your past, whether it's a relationship, what are you holding on to that you need to say, you know what, I bless it, thank you for teaching me the lessons, and now I'm leaving it behind because I'm moving forward. So, in order to change, we've got to let go of the past. I allow the butterfly to emerge and the wings are very damp and it's very vulnerable for a few hours, so it stays in a little flight enclosure. So this you're looking at is a female monarch, and I did promise you I'd show you. The female monarchs, the veins or panes are thicker than on the males. Right here on the lower wing, which is called the hind wing, there'd be two ovals if it was a male. Those are the pheromone sacs. So this is a lovely lady monarch. This at the bottom is a queen butterfly. The thing it has in common with the monarch is it also only eats milkweed. But look mm -hmm. at the differences in those two. So the queen is more dotted than striped. The body is half black and half rust, rust, where the monarch is solid black. So if you're out and about and you see that orange and black, it's not always a monarch. Sometimes it's a queen butterfly. And yes, queen butterflies come in males and females. If this was a male, it would have the two ovals here, the pheromone sac at the lower wing. So this is a rabble, a, a, an abundance of monarchs that I release. And every day here in South Florida, I can release anywhere from 1 to 12, 15, even 20 I had at one time. So you want, I release them in different areas to spread the pollinators around and I don't want them all competing for the same mates and food sources. So I might let go five at my park. I might take five over to my mom's. I might take some over to the beach, things like that too. I'm sharing the gene pool of my very healthy monarchs. What can you share about yourself? Is it an idea? Is it a skill? Is it a talent? Is it just the love in your heart? What can you share with others? to make this world a better place. These are peacock butterflies, white peacocks, and they're usually found on or around ponds or marshes. And what they're doing here is making more white peacocks. So look around ponds and lakes and stuff and see other different butterflies that are out and about. My favorite quote is, just when the caterpillar thought life was over, she became a butterfly. And that's from Barbara Haynes Howitt from Ladies of the Brobador book. So think about that. How many of us are stuck in old ways, old habits, and we're too afraid to let go? And let me tell you, a lot of times when I have hundreds of caterpillars, some of them go to the top to roost and start the next phase of their life, which is becoming that beautiful chrysalis. And some of them just continue to eat poop and sleep because it's familiar and it tastes good and it feels good and it's what they know. But what they're doing actually is holding themselves back from the next inevitable phase. And I can't help but think this very interesting time we're living in is for, we're forced to put in that same position. Let's be honest, we're not going back to normal. We're never gonna be back to what we knew and that's okay. We need to pivot our lives, our businesses, our families, our nutritional plans, our habits, our exercise, and move forward because something better's out there. We can't waste time talking about what happened and he should have done this and she should have done that and I wish I made, nobody can push the rewind button. All we can do is assess where we are right now and move forward. So this is an Eastern black swallowtail and isn't it beautiful how she's like waving there. So if you like to attract them to your yard, the host plant again is parsley, dill, and fennel. So things you can do, be very mindful of what you think, do, and say, because everything has repercussions. Everything thoughts, everything begins with a thought, just like those butterflies began with an egg. Everything begins with a thought. Our words can be used to hurt or to heal. So please choose wisely. And don't, you know, just by making someone else feel badly never makes you feel better about yourself. So I always, didn't your mom tell you like my mom did? If you have nothing nice to say, 
than say nothing. And I like the think um, anagram is, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Um, is it helpful? That's out of order. But is it true? Is it helpful? Is it interesting? Is it necessary? And is it kind? If you don't get at least four yeses to those, keep it to yourself, bury it. So did you know that, mo that butterflies can't even see the beauty of their own wings? Many of us don't see within ourselves something that makes us each beautifully unique. This is a Gulf fritillary butterfly. I released two of these last week. They're my favorite. And if you'd like to attract them to your yard, you want to plant passion vine. So think about what it is in yourself that you can bring to the world. What is your gift? So a couple of the ideas I'd like to share with you on making small changes is believe in abundance. Can you reach out to a friend, a neighbor, someone, and even just pick up your phone like we did in the old fashioned days before texting and just call and say, I was thinking about you. Are you doing all right? Is there anything you need? I'm, I'm just checking in. How would you feel being the recipient of that call out of the blue? Sometimes I randomly just pull up my phone and scroll and randomly call someone and say that. And the results have been amazing. It really makes people's day and lets them know that they are loved and cared for. So give of yourself. It just takes a minute. That was a little, one of my little things I do is I make these little beaded angels. Shh, don't tell anybody it's me because I leave them in the park. I leave them with tips. I put them in people's handbags where they'll find them when they need them. So what small little act of kindness then can you do to bring joy to someone's day? Share resources. I live in Florida, in South Florida, and this is these are pictures from my very own backyard. And this is Florence and Hubert, the possums in my backyard. And they have a family of six babies right now. So I do have four rescue dogs. And I'm very mindful at night that I don't let the dogs in the backyard because Florence and Hubert and their family need to feed and eat and have peace and quiet. So I'll take my dogs out front at night instead of letting them in the backyard. So no matter what you have, you can share part of it. The birds you're looking at are a pair of painted buntings and they winter here in South Florida. Their favorite food is white safflower seed. So the female is the green one and the male is the very colorful one. And people are like, why is the male always the prettiest one? Well, the male is showy to attract the female and the female has the job of mostly sitting on the nest. So being a less showy and more drab color is more protection for the babies and her nest. So share your resources. Create a happy place or space for yourself. This is my fairy hut in my backyard, which I just reorganized yesterday. So I go out there morning, noon, night. I'll have coffee out there. I meditate out there. I'll eat a meal out there. You'll see my rescue Yorkie uh, sitting on the sofa there. But create a happy place for yourself. You can have a shelf, an altar in your home. You could have a special potted plant that just looking at it makes you feel happy. But remember, being selfish and is not part of self-care. Self-caring is not selfish. Just like the air mask analogy on an airplane. If you don't put the air mask on yourself in an emergency, you can't help others around you. So be very mindful about refilling your own cup. Create yourself a happy place. Give your gift self the gift of friends. These are uh, my friends that I met on Periscope and we actually got to meet in real life. And the lady above me is a very dear friend for like 30 years that we talk, we text, we email, we've seen each other in person. She lives about three hours north of me. And she was one of those people I did a random call this week. So make amazing new friends and you will find friends in places you didn't quite expect sometimes. So be open to that. Take a walk out in nature. This is the park that I go to daily with my dogs. And it was a beautiful sunset this evening. And I enjoy walking barefoot. It's called earthing, where I'm really connected to the earth. I could feel the cool grass near my feet or the warm sand if I'm walking near the pond there. So get back to nature. Take a walk. And if you do take a walk, please don't be on your phone. Don't be listening to music. If you listen to music, you're gonna miss all the beautiful sounds of nature. I actually heard an owl the other night, which was amazing. So get out in nature without your phone on. Expand your horizons. What trip can you take? Have you started to make a list of what you wanna do when our very interesting time is behind us? 
do that and start thinking forward. You can manifest those wishes and dreams. So be the change you wish to see in the world. That's one of my favorite quotes from Mahatma Gandhi. Wake up, be awesome, rent and repeat. I almost said rinse and repeat. So again, some of the things I talked about was be very mindful of your thoughts. They become your words. They train your words, transform into actions, your actions, convert your character and be consistent in your character because it becomes your destiny. That's a revised quote with credit to a Chinese proverb, a Navajo way, Mahatma Gandhi, Frank Outlaw and Margaret Thatcher. So you can connect with me here various places. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm back in, go escape. I invite you to connect with me there. And back to you, Jim.